Hello, and welcome to Write for the Stage. My name is Nicole, and this is Molly, and she is a playwright. Hello, welcome to Write for the Stage. My name is Nicole and I'm a playwright. I'm here to help you learn how to share your ideas, whether that's for an audience of one or 1,000. Today's video is called, But There's a Problem. You will need about three to five sheets of paper. Now, I have really big handwriting, so I used five. And a pen or pencil. If you don't have paper, or if you'd rather type, then you can use a computer or a tablet instead. Now let's get started. Once upon a time, there was a main character, and they were happy. They just lived in a happy town, and they had happy family and happy friends, and everything was great. It wasn't perfect. I mean, maybe sometimes they like, chewed with their mouth open, or maybe they just always wished they could be a little bit closer to their cousin, or maybe they didn't know how to become a famous scuba diver. Still, on the whole, their life was really good. But then there was a problem. Because there's always a problem, right? A story about a happy person with a happy life who doesn't do anything, that's boring. It's when the problem comes into the story that the character actually takes action. They have to do stuff, and that makes the story interesting. So we as writers have to get really good at writing problems into our stories, and those problems are also called conflicts. There are all different kinds of conflicts that we can write about. Some conflicts are between heroes and villains, and there's fighting and evildoers and action sequences and all that stuff. But there doesn't always have to be a bad guy in a conflict. I'll bet almost all of you watching this video right now have at some point had a conflict or a disagreement with another person in your family. I know that I definitely have. And sometimes family conflicts are actually really serious Right? We know that not all families have caring and healthy relationships. And that's when we need to ask for help from somebody that we trust, like a teacher or another adult. But I also think it's pretty common for people in families to disagree and even get really angry and they still love each other. Or at least like love each other enough that they don't have to battle it out with swords or something. So there can be a conflict between two people and no bad guy. For example, let's talk about the movie Black Panther. Black Panther was written by two people working together, Ryan Coogler and Joe Robert Cole. Ryan Coogler also directed the movie, so if you're someone who likes to write and also thinks about bringing your own stories to life, you could learn more about Ryan Coogler and how he does both of those really important jobs. But back to the story. And don't worry, there are no spoilers here. The main character of Black Panther is T'Challa, played by Chadwick Boseman. T'Challa is the king of Wakanda, which sadly does not exist in the real world. But in the story, Wakanda is a country in Africa with amazing advanced technology and resources. Everyone in Wakanda knows what they have, but they keep it a secret. The rest of the world thinks Wakanda is a very rural, quote-unquote, third world country with just farmers and shepherds living there. Some of you will understand right away why a country in Africa, if it had all of these resources, all of this incredible technology, would hide it from everybody else. If you know about history, then you know that almost every single real country in Africa was invaded by Europeans. Europeans attacked and colonized places all over Africa, and they also kidnapped and enslaved literally millions of people. So there are a lot of really good reasons for Wakanda not to trust outsiders. 
And it might seem like a really good strategy too if you're King T'Challa and his people to hide what you have from the rest of the world because then they think there's nothing to steal. And if they think there's nothing to steal, then no Europeans or no Americans or no anybody will attack and try to harm your people and take what you have. Black Panther is a superhero movie, so of course there are bad guys and conflicts that lead to fighting and very exciting action sequences. But I want to share a conflict that happens between King Chachala and his friend Nakia, played by Lupita Nyong'o. Nakia is also from Wakanda, and she works as a spy, going on missions all over the world. She has a different perspective than King T'Challa does. So let's read the scene from the movie together. T'Challa and Nakia walk through a busy marketplace in Wakanda. Come home, Nakia. I'm right here. Stay. I came to support you and to honor your father, but I can't stay. It's just... I found my calling out there. I've seen too many in need just to turn a blind eye. I can't be happy here knowing that there's people out there who have nothing. What would you have Wakanda do about it? Share what we have. We could provide aid and access to technology and refuge to those who need it. Other countries do it. We could do it better. We are not like these other countries, Nakia. If the world found out what we truly are, what we possess, we could lose our way of life. Wakanda is strong enough to help others and protect ourselves at the same time. (sighs) If you were not so stubborn, you would make a great queen. I would make a great queen because I am so stubborn. Ah, see, you admit it. If... If that's what I wanted. King T'Challa and his friend Nakia disagree with each other in this scene. They have a conflict, but neither one of them is bad or evil. Basically, their conflict is they don't agree about what their country should do next. Nakia wants Wakanda to tell its secret to the world so that they can use all this advanced technology that they have and all their resources to help a lot of other people who are in need and who are suffering. King T'Challa, on the other hand, really wants to protect his people and his country, and he's worried that if they tell the world their secret, they'll be putting everybody at risk. What's so cool to me about Black Panther is that the whole long, amazing movie kind of comes back to the same conflict between T'Challa and Nakia. It's just, should Wakanda tell its secret or not? It's a great movie. I highly recommend it. One thing, it is rated PG-13. So I know some of you watching right now might have to wait a few years before you're allowed to see it. And just trust me, it's so worth it. So now that we know what a conflict is, let's write our own. Ready for step one? Here we go. Choose two characters that might have a conflict with one another, like T'Challa and Nakia do. For example, a parent and a child, two siblings, a worker and their boss, a teacher and their student, The list goes on and on. You can choose any two characters that you like. Number your characters one and two. You'll see why later. You can always use any character you want when you're doing right for the stage. So if you have a character from the past that you want to bring back, go for it. And if you're having a hard time coming up with two characters, I've got some suggestions. First, I have a whole video called Make Your Own Character that guides you through that process. So you could pause now, do that first, and come back when you're ready. Or you could choose to write about animals instead of people. So basically pick two animals that you like that might not always get along with each other. You know, like a cat and a mouse or a shark and a fish, any animals that might have a conflict. For my characters, I chose two that I created for another video in the past, and they also happen to be sisters. This is my character number one. Her name is Nellie, the Nervous Chocolate Eater. And this is my character number two. 
Her name is Nyla, and she is Nellie's older sister. Got it? Good. So hit pause here and take all the time you need to choose your two characters. Go. Nice job. Now let's move on to step number two. Make a list of at least three possible conflicts between your characters. So definitely come up with three and more if you want. This step is a brainstorm. So your conflicts can be as weird as you want. They can be as silly as you want. It's really just about coming up with choices. So what are some possible conflicts between characters? We know that T'Challa and Nakia disagree about the future of their country. A parent and a child could have a conflict about something that the child wants to do if the parent doesn't want them to do it. A worker and their boss could have a conflict about how much the worker should be paid. And with a teacher and a student, maybe the conflict could be about the topic that the student wants to pick for an assignment or the class rules. You know my characters, Nellie and Nyla, are sisters, so the conflicts on my list might apply to your characters too if they happen to also be siblings. Here are the conflicts. Number one, Nellie ate Nyla's chocolate. Kind of a silly one. Number two, Nyla is trying to study and Nellie is being loud. And number three, Nellie needs Nyla's help but Nyla says no. Now it's your turn. So hit that pause button and write your list. Good work, writers. This is the last step for today. Step number three. Dialogue. First, Choose one of the conflicts on your list. Next, write a dialogue between your characters. Now, the word dialogue, if you don't know, means conversation. And to save a little bit of time to write your dialogue, label each line with number one or number two for character number one or character number two. Your dialogue will look a lot like the dialogue between T'Challa and Nakia, with each character getting a turn to talk. Remember, dialogue is written down for actors to say, and actors need to know which character says each line so they don't mess up. This is the conflict I chose, number three. Nellie needs Nyla's help, but Nyla says no. And I actually combined that one with a little bit of conflict number two also, which you can do if you want to. Here's my dialogue. You can see that I didn't take all the time to write down Nellie and Nyla over and over and over again next to their lines. That would have taken forever. So I just wrote number one for Nellie and number two for Nyla. Okay, here's the conversation. Nellie walks into Nyla's room. Okay, Nyla, I'm ready to practice my speech. What? My speech. <clears throat> if I were president of the United, not now, okay? But you said you'd help me practice. I will, I will. I'm just busy right now. Can we practice tomorrow? My speech is tomorrow. Ugh, can you just get dad to help you? Nyla. What? You said you could help me, remember? Nellie, you don't get it, okay? I'm so behind on my applications. Mrs. Sandoval's final exam is supposed to be, like, the hardest one ever, and that's on top of my regular homework. I don't have time for your little speech. Okay. Forget it. Wait. Don't cry. Like you care. I'm... You forgot! I told you how scared I am to give a whole speech in front of everyone, and you said you knew how to help me. Oh. 
but since you're so busy, I'll leave you alone. Don't leave me alone. Nyla hugs Nellie. I'm really sorry I forgot. I'm just so stressed out. It makes it hard to think. I get it. It's hard for me to think when I'm nervous. So... Can we have chocolate ice cream now? Yeah. I think I need a break. And then I'll help you practice. I'll bet I can help you too. Oh, really? I mean, I'm kind of the expert of freaking out. (laughs) I have so much to learn from you, little sis. Okay, writers, you know the drill by now. And don't worry if this step takes longer than the first two. You control the pause button and there is no rush. Happy writing. That's it, you're done. You learned how to write about a problem or a conflict to create an interesting story. I hope you had fun. If you wanna keep going, great. What you can do next is read your dialogue out loud with another person. Or you could even ask two people to read it out loud for you so you can listen. Maybe two friends or two people who live with you would be a good option. This is something that I've had the chance to experience as a playwright. And let me tell you, hearing your words said out loud by other people, it never gets old. It's really cool and I've learned a lot by doing it. And that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching Right for the Stage. I will see you next time. Bye.